if you're 60 years old and you're like, I just, I, I'm, I regret it. I should have gone to med school 30 years ago, 40 years ago, whatever it is. And every day you're waking up going, man, I wish, I wish I was going into an office today to take care of patients. Don't live with that regret. Go to medical school. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A. I'm excited to be on the show with you. How are you today? Doing great. Awesome. What can I answer for you today? Uh, yeah, so I kind of have a twofold question. And the first is, um, is it too late to go back? And the second is, if it's not, how do I talk about what kind of, I had a rocky um, undergraduate career. And how do I talk about that um, without coming off as like, um, feeling sorry for myself or like pity because I have a lot of like different marginalized identities that kind of affected my um, first time around going to undergraduate. Yeah. So the first answer, first question is easy to answer. The answer is always no. Wait, or yes, depending on how you ask it. <laughs> is it too late to go back? No. Can I still go back? Yes. However you ask it, the, the answer is always you can still go back uh, I'm assuming we're talking about going back to medical school and not going back to um, like Uganda or something as, as a country that you want to go back and visit, um, right? If right. you want to go to medical school, whether you are 14, 40, or 400, assuming you have a pulse, you can go back to medical school or, or go to medical school um, in your journey. Obviously, the older you get, the the time calculation is... Uh, where a lot of a lot of people bring in the money calculation of okay, if I go to medical school now, I'm going to have this much debt, and I'm only going to have roughly X number of years kind of working in my prime to pay back loans, and is it worth it? My answer to that is always it is worth it if that's what you want to do. the The money should never be a factor based on age because if if you're 60 years old and you're like I just I I'm, I regret it, I should have gone to med school. 30 years ago, 40 years ago, whatever it is. And every day you're waking up going, man, I wish I wish I was going into an office today to take care of patients. Don't live with that regret. Go to medical school. So uh, that off the table. Now the question is, how do you tell your story? And that is uh, a good question, right? I have a, a whole book on writing a personal statement um, and, and really telling that story as to who you are, where you've come from, why you why you are here. So let me ask you a question. Uh, during undergrad, were you pre-med to begin with? Uh, yeah, yeah. When I went back to school, I was pre-med. Um, so just a l tiny bit more context. So I, I was an, I'm a non-traditional student. I went back when I was 24. I'd already had kids, been married, divorced. So I was a parent. I never went to high school. I dropped out when I was in ninth grade because I had my first kid at 15. Okay. Um, and so I had to go, go back, but I wanted to be a pre-med. And literally everywhere I went, all the community colleges, they were like, not, not going to happen. Try to be a nurse. And so I tried to do that and it didn't work. And um, I jumped around a lot in community college um, and before I finally went to a university. But through the whole time was always pre-med. Um, I'm also trans. I'm transgender. So I was assigned to female at birth and know myself to and live my life every day as a man. And that, that happened during my undergraduate years. And it also kind of hurt my my college career. And so I, I have like a lot of stops and starts. Um, I ultimately end up graduating with a bachelor's in public health and starting LGBTQ advocacy. And that's kind of what I've been doing now for the past like six six or seven years, um, got my master's degree, but just like have been feeling like something's missing. And I think mm -hmm. it's that, like, I think my calling, I'm good at what I do, but my calling is to be a doctor. And so yeah. now wanting to go back thinking like, you know, my, I don't know, I've, I've had such a rocky undergraduate career, but it was because of the circumstances. My kids are all, I live very, my kids are all teenagers. My oldest is going to start college next, next year. And so it's like, I'm, I'm ready, but I'm just, yeah, I feel like, how do I talk about that? I don't think I could submit an application without some of that being part of my <clears throat> personal story because mm -hmm. my undergraduate career is so rocky. Yeah. The, the, the question ultimately comes down to, in terms of including a lot of that in your story, the question comes down to, is 
being a trans man, is that a huge part of why you want to be a doctor, right? Do you want to, uh, the, the fact that you do a lot of LGBT advocacy, is that something that you want to now carry forward into medicine and help those uh, who are transitioning, help the kids figure out who they are as people in this world, where they fit in. Um, if that is a large part of your story, then I think that definitely it goes in your personal statement and goes in your application because guess what? We need a lot of physicians to advocate for LGBT, uh, the LGBT community, and LGBT patients. So um, if that is part of your story as to why you're doing this, I think we tell that story. Uh, if it's not really part of your story, but it's just part of the struggles, um, the the identity struggles, the whether bullying or or other aspects being marginalized as a student, if if you want to tell that story just to uh, explain poor grades and poor performance, then then maybe there's a discussion of of how much do we include. I, I don't think, at the end of the day, the question is always, is what you are telling me going to be a red flag for me to be concerned that you are going to or not going to complete medical school in the given amount of time that we give you, right? Whether that's three or four years, depending on the school that you go to. For you and your story, right, telling the story of of uh, being a trans man and the early struggles and and um, in undergrad, none of that really is a red flag to me. That's just who you are, and that's part of your journey, part of your story, right? Uh, identifying as part of the LGBT community is not. It's not like a. Uh, oh my gosh, like he's not going to finish medical school because he identifies as part of the LGBT community, right? The the grades separately from that, obviously you need to have the story of academic success because that's ultimately the question. Are you going to be academically successful in medical school? Now, maybe your past grades don't prove it. Hopefully we have some upward trend in your GPA, in your grades to prove that you can handle medical school, whether that's the later part of your undergraduate undergraduate career, your master's program, anything that shows any upward trend, that's ultimately the, the biggest question that I have and not necessarily the early struggles and identity and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. No. So I'm just now starting to go back for post-bac. Okay. I, I got my master's in um, public policy. Okay. So that's not going to help. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so help. <laughs> yeah. So going back for your post back now. So we still have some time. How how long are you planning on working on your post back? Is it a formal, a do it yourself? What does that look like? Um. So it's slightly. I found it on the um, AMC website, but mm -hmm. it's at a community college here. Okay. Um, so there's only two, one's at a private university, one's at a community college. And so the price difference is yep. very different. Yep. Um, but that's my goal is to go there. Um, okay. and, and how long is the program? Be two years. Two years. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So they have, um, unlike most community college, they have like high level biology yep. as well as like they have molecular biology, biochemistry. So two, two years possibly. Okay. Um, I took in all of biology and general chemistry and some calculus, but that's almost 10 years ago. Yeah. Okay. And how are your grades so far in the post -back? Are you just Are you just getting started? Don't know grades yet? Just getting started. Okay. Yeah. How do you yet. think you will do? I think I will do great. I mean, uh, my my bio, my bio biology and general chemistry, when I took it 10 years ago, when my kids were all little little toddlers um i did great in them yeah um but some of those other courses like it wasn't consistent um because something would happen and then i would you know need to withdraw or something like that so yeah. now all my kids are older more you know high, <laughs> not as needy teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> kids are so now needy different challenges <laughs> yeah exactly uh come home alive please that's always the challenge yeah. <laughs> um okay yeah I, I have a six a six year old and a eight uh 18 month old almost 19 month old so uh i i still have to go through all of those growing pains um so yeah so for you um 
it's it's an awesome journey that you've been on. Obviously, the the story is going to be very unique uh, compared to a lot of students. I, I know lots of uh, trans men and women who are applying to medical school who are in medical school. So if you need any connection to to them, let me know. But we need more advocates for the LGBT population. And so uh, I think a lot of medical schools will give you some some leeway and, and some flexibility with where you've come from GPA-wise, knowing that the journey that you've been on both as a parent and as an advocate and, and as, as a member of the LGBT community, they're going to want you in the class because you bring so much experience and knowledge um, and, and just wisdom to the, the, your classmates and your future patients. So um, really your goal from this point forward is straight A's, right? That's, that's your goal. If you fall short of that goal, that's okay. Don't fall too short though, because at this point, your only mission is to prove that you can handle the academic rig- rigors of medical school. That's the only concern that you should be, that you should have. Forget about the past. It is what it is. You struggled. You 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 had all the obstacles that you had to overcome. But from where you are right now, your mission, as you've cho- chosen to accept it, is to get straight A's. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any okay. follow-up questions? And... <laughs> um, no, I think that that... I... I guess the only thing is, besides the trans part, like, will I need to be able to, like, do I have to explain? I guess my, yeah, I maybe that's something to worry about in a couple of years, but I guess I, I just wonder, like, in my personal statement, besides why I want to be a doctor, um, are those things going to be relevant? If even if I get straight A's for two years, like what if my GPA is still really low? Yeah. Um, so so again, I think uh, if it's part of why medicine, I think it's super relevant. Uh, if you want to use part of it as a very mini, and I, again, I have this in the book, uh, the personal statement book about kind of how to talk about red flags. Um, if if you want to have a sentence or two just to say, hey, like I know that when you go and look at my transcript that I know that you're going to know that it doesn't look very good, but I just want to let you know that maybe here's one small reason. Invite me for an interview and we can have a further discussion about it. Okay. All right. It's, it's, it's usually just a little head nod to say, I screwed up. Here's a small reason why. <laughs> Please forgive me and look at the rest of my application. Mm-hmm. That's all it's for. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Good luck on your journey going, going back to a post back while your uh, your child is also off to college as well. That's got to be a, a fun time. <laughs> you guys can have a little study group together. Um, but please yeah. keep in touch and uh, let me know. I can help in the future. All right. Thank you so much.